Welcome to Carousel to UK's podcast. Still have yet to name the podcast, so put some ideas down below. Today we have Sam Smith talking about a couple new lenses Sigma are bringing to the game, but also Sigma lenses in general. You know I'm a big fan, and let's just get into it, shall we? Hi, I'm Sam from Sigma UK. Um, I'm one of the product specialists here, and I look after the camera center. Yeah, perfect. And today we're going to be talking about a bunch of different subjects, like uh, we've got something new, maybe. Um, but also just Sigma in general and some a few little fun bits here and there. Thank you for coming down. Of course, we've actually done a lot of videos for you guys. So thank you for supporting the channel in that regard. Oh, no back. worries. I, I just um, hope you're not um, sick of my face. No, <laughs> definitely. De never sick of your no, face, man. Yeah. Um, but the big thing which I've been, uh, which has been really nice, what you guys have done is sent us a lot of the newer products that are coming out. And uh, like I've said to you in the past and many times within this YouTube channel, I'm a massive fan of Sigma, especially when it comes to my lenses. Perhaps talk about 35mm f1.2 a little bit too much, which is my staple go-to lens. Also, some of the other products that I just kind of want to talk about a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So, of course, we've done the 6600. That lens. Yes, yes. Uh, we tend to do some fantastic optics, like, as you said, like 35, which you've got on right now. Um, and then we do the, uh, like, a little bit more unique focal lens, like 60 to 600. I know you had to play with the 14 mil as well, the 1.4. That's delightful. Um, but yeah. yeah, we've got so many different focal lenses which other brands can't quite achieve or can't do the same way. So that's how well how we thrive as well. And I think that's been something that's been quite interesting from the lenses that you've been introducing is yes, you have the staple lenses like your 35 or your 50s and all of that. And Sigma's 35 has pretty much become a staple in many different environments, wedding, uh -huh. events, product photography, all of that. And, you know, it was the 35 one two year up the game again with the aperture mm -hmm. and no other brand does it. And this is something that, which I find interesting when it comes to the Sigma lenses is that you've tried to apply a different way of looking at the lenses, which are usually considered standard. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you have the 1835, which we talked about a little while yes, back, and yes, yes. they need to be doing another one. I know you probably oh, can't comment on anyway, that. It would be fantastic if we did. Uh, it's one of the, we, we get a long list of when we see you guys at the shows, when we, we talk to people, we get a list of it, where everyone wants to see. <laughs> and oh, that's always up there is, we want to see new 18 to 35. So um, it's always, the nice thing is we're a small company. It feeds straight yeah. back to the factory, goes back into our R&D team. They can then, and get away with it if they yeah. wanted to so 100 well that, i mean that's 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 exciting either way mm. so of course you do have optics that are a little bit out like a little bit different yes uh which is cool so you've got the 6600 and all of these kind of things first 10 times optics up to 600 mil in native in that which is which is awesome um and of course we did the video down d max and you seen that one uh, I think which was the um for the firmware update of the year 15600 in the race cars yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah again that's like, that's, yeah. that's 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 that was uh, interesting well again the 15600 is a really awesome range in general and a, and you guys have done quite well i remember when i worked in the store we actually sold a lot of them like it would be like every other day someone would be like oh we want a 15600 yeah and i actually i actually managed to have uh, my hands on the 120 to 300 Nine which is eight. rare yeah. which is yeah. rare yeah. to yeah. see yeah. um so, no i actually sold that one as well i was that was a oh, beautiful lens aren't they like massive they they are massive but the optical performance get that 2.8 all the way through yeah. that's a little bit picky yeah, yeah, yeah. but we're, we're slowly shrinking them down you know it's, it takes a lot of engineering a lot of work, oh, the team are getting there i mean if you're talking about our 14 mil yeah the, the new 1.4 excellent like it's it's another you know, um, when the, the 35 came out, a lot of people were saying, like, are you actually going to see the depth of field difference when it came to going down to 1.2 and stuff like that? And, and you really it makes do. A, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Like, that little number going down from 1.8 to 1.4, or in this case, 1.4 to 1.2, it's, I mean, the 35 is such a big difference in terms of depth of field. Um, same with the 1.4, you get so much more light coming through to hit that end sensor, which has made it so such more of a appealing lens i think it was fantastic for for, for landscapers uh people who want to do any astro work as well deal for that um yeah yeah it's, it's done really well <laughs> so, yeah yeah 100 100 percent. yeah and when it came to the 40 mil as well like the cap as well oh the cap's cool so yeah. the cap is cool so yeah. this is a, another thing which i think is is interesting to apply to stuff that is you know you, you would just 
throwing your bag or whatever. It'd be completely pointless, completely useless. Yeah. But, you know, having a function, an extra functionality to the cap is a really good idea when it comes to the ND filters and stuff like that. And that's the thing is, it's it's how can you make a lens cap interesting? <laughs> I think I think we've done it with this one. It's basically, you can rear mount filters, as you said, onto the back of the lens. And when you're not using them, you just saw them in the lens cap. Um, genius. And we're like, why has no one ever done this before? Um, and <laughs> Sorry, I just, like, it's just like, at the moment, I think he's timing it yes, because yeah, whenever yeah, you're, yeah. you've got to a point it's where it's like, right? <laughs> there's like a really big thing. It's like, it's really interesting, like clicking. <laughs> Sorry, there's some noise going down at the warehouse it's at the fine, moment. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then we've also done other caps as well. I think we're talking about one later on, which is one of our magnetic ones, which is fantastic. But it's all these little things, which a lot of other companies that overlook and just go, ah, let's just do a yeah. little cap. We're, we're actually trying to, they kind of reinvent the wheel in a way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and like that's going to be an interesting segue, but it also comes down to kind of like how Sigma have really branded themselves from back in the old days where, you know, um, weren't necessarily considered bottom, but Timeline was one of those ones where it was considered a little bit better, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but these days, especially when it came to the art lenses, you really introduced the amount of quality and the, the like this branding that's gone throughout. Mm. All of the creation of the lenses has been really awesome, and it's been really nice to see. But speaking on that note yes, yeah. of the uh, the old Sigma, what's this one? Second, that's not the thing I'm looking for. That's not the thing I'm looking for. That's not the thing I'm looking for. It's like magic. It's, it is like magic. It should come up there, but apparently it's not actually. Okay, so I really have appreciated Sigma branding, and this is probably one of my favorite things you guys have produced in a little while. I'm gonna play it because it's so funny. Let's begin. Yeah. You got here. Lovely. It's perhaps the best. So you're saying this was filmed at the Sigma factory as well? Yes, it's filmed at the factory. It's one of the engineers actually doing a drop test and a shape test and a running test with one of our magnetic lens caps. It's just, it's probably one of the most quirky things I think I've seen <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a while. And it's just beautiful. It's, I think because a lot, a lot of people, as soon as you say magnetic lens cap, they're going to go, oh, it's going to fall off. It's going to knock off. It's going to be the thing you lose first. But actually, as you can see, we've thoroughly tested it. We've done a lot of <laughs> lot of work to try to make it as strong as possible without losing any of the mechanism in the lens itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but these, <laughs> these magnetic lens caps, therefore, made just purely from our eye series of lenses. Yeah. We've got like nine of them in the range now. Yeah. And, but uh, it's a fun video. <laughs> it's just like... Whoever edited it yeah. must have had so, so much money. Can we... Oh, uh, it's so clever. I feel sorry for this guy who's actually doing all the walking and jumping. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a lot of they walking. Swap it around a little bit. Like I said, though, it's it like it's beautiful, and it's nice to see from Sigma when it came to the sort of like new. Well, not even new. It's been going ages now. To be fair, when it comes to what you actually create um, for the the content side mm -hmm. of things, um, and. I'm guessing this kind of applies to new lenses that you're, you're, you're producing more well. Yeah. Segway. Ah, there we go. It was, <laughs> it was smooth. Um, so smooth. So smooth. Uh, yeah, so we, we've been del uh, delightful to show you a couple of new products, which are, I believe, announcing on day of release of this. So yeah. um, these are coming out on the first. I'm just bending down to get them to set. <laughs> so we have two which are coming out. So we got the 23 millimeter f1.4 dcdn made for fuji x mount now and how we also have the 100 to 400 dgdn and this is made for fuji x mount as well a lot of you keen fans and lens boys will go hang on pick up these lenses before we do we yeah. do it's the same lens uh we have just we've been accepted to to make the new x mount series on these um these lenses now so we've got 23 in x mount and a 100 400 next that which I can't wait to get, really test this out. I mean, this is this is a pre-production sample we have here, um, which you guys are going to be testing, testing for the next couple of weeks. Excited! Um, if it 
sigma lenses just feel so secure and everything like yes. that which is yeah. great of course the 100 to 400 is one of those ranges that i think is important in anyone's kind of load out because it's kind of the first lens that people go to when it comes to getting into doing nature photography exactly it's like it's, it's a distance lens but without the weight of some of our longer lenses as well mm. um so you could put this in a bag you it's you wouldn't really in the big bag for it you could take it with your your standard 24 to 70 which you normally go with um and this would give you such a bigger range especially on a fuji film as well because this is a 100 to 400 however with all the fujis they're APS-C, so yeah. they crop by 1.5 1.6 times um so this actually is equivalent to 150 to 600 mil uh, in that tiny little package in that tiny little package and especially when it comes to uh, fuji lenses as well i mean this is offered in at how much oh sorry the price is 899 899 which i believe does come in under what you would expect out of the fuji lens uh, I well so yeah, yeah yeah it's it's very competitive in the market for that mm. um also with all our lenses you get the three-year guarantee as well or three-year warranty yeah. which is fantastic um with all of them you also plant two trees as well so every time I... yeah, so yes. we're, we're doing tree planting so um since 2022 we started doing a, for every lens sold we plant a tree and for every warranty registered we plant a tree so basically for every lens which is picked up from sigma you plant a tree for or two trees in this case. Oh, that's that's really yeah. good. And um, that's something we actually talked about. You said you watched Vida's podcast as well. Yes, yes. Um, sustainability yeah. in kind of like a uh, you know, corporate entity is yeah. actually really important. Yeah. And that's lovely because tree planting is it's a good it's a good one. I, it, it definitely feels... is. I mean, it's not. Um, a lot of people think tree planting is just chucking seed into a field. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's actually proper trees in themselves. It, they're they're small little saplings that you you plant around and it's in multiple other countries which we're supporting we're working with eden Re reforestation project which is the company which we're collaborating with in this oh, nice. it's very exciting um and for us as well it just we planted thousands of trees over the last couple of years and <laughs> hopefully many more to go so you're gonna have the sigma of forest soon. oh i can't wait yeah, can't wait. yeah. are they gonna are they gonna like uh plant it in like a the sigma logo oh that would be amazing and then do sigma <laughs> tours around it with long lenses oh, yeah. perfect yeah. sort it that's just that. like the dream <laughs> yeah. and then of course you've got the 23 millimeter yes yeah, so and the little well. 23 here as well let's not forget that so this one is made for prop sensors yeah and um, so you you would have seen this being released but um that last year we now. did a video on the uh, it when it first came out yes, yes, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um and it was made for e-mount l mount and um micro four thirds as well and now it's added to it to make the x mount so oh. we're really heavily supporting the fuji system again it's one of those things that everyone's asked for yeah they've said we want more fuji lenses the fuji system can be put i feel like closed off at times um so having our support find it yeah it opens it up for just a variety and just a nice thing 100 percent. and i think when it comes to um the main manufacturers for cameras these days i think what's become more and more important when it comes to what they produce is actually having the accessibility between other lens brands as well because exactly. if you're looking to get into a a camera brand let's say canon nikon or whatever uh, a big part of that is actually having some lenses that are a little bit more affordable because these mirrorless lenses do come in at a, a little pretty buck sometimes. Yes, unfortunately. Um, and sometimes spending, you know, you need to pick what lenses you want to spend on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's going to be interesting seeing where this goes, especially when it comes to the effort. Is it effort mount? Uh, so it, we, we call it the X mount. The X, yeah, it's the X, X mount. mount. Yeah. I, I always get confused for trees. The Nikon and the FX, which is oh, Fuji X mount. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, because yeah, that's yeah. kind of where I kind of like think about it. But it is yeah. the X mount, isn't yeah. it? I'll cut that out because that just sounds like really bad, bad like, yeah, camera. Right, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> no, 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 no. Um, but yes, uh, it's it's nice to see uh, you guys supporting one of the more fringe kind of, not necessarily fringe even, but like like the outside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and with us as well, we we already support so many mounts across the system. We're, obviously, everyone knows it's like EF and F mount, Nikon. Yeah. We're now straight into the Sony mount. We've got Micro Four Thirds, L mount, which is kind of something. Like yeah. Sigma and Leica as well. Z mounts come on board in the last year, which is actually fantastic. And then obviously more X mounts fitting nice. in. Um, so yeah, we're, we've got such a range from pretty much any photographer to to pick up and play. No. Really? Um, so yeah, we sit in a good boat. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, we're gonna be. I'd be interested to do a little video on them and take them out and have a, have a, have a play. It may come out before this or after a house show, but no, it's exciting either way. 
and uh yeah i do i tell you what i have been enjoying more and more as i've been getting into this all right is actually taking photographs oh really because which oh, is I something a videographer, I, yes it? i'm a videographer yeah. and that's kind of where i kind of see kind of everything which i do it's like i'm a videographer first <laughs> yeah. you know um, but I've actually really been enjoying um, doing a little bit of street photography, but nice. also um, photography in general. Yeah. I think it's, it's it's an interesting art form to get into. I can imagine that's why you don't have a client breathing down your neck, do you? Like, no. In the new world. No, 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 well, no exactly. Like, need a, need a, need a, need a deadline. Terry's just there in the corner. When's the next video coming out? <laughs> no, that'll probably get taken out. <laughs> <laughs> I can maintain the job, the job. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, it's, um, it's exciting to give it a go and, yeah. and give it a play. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, it's going to be good. And of course, this is another great segue. You kind of set me up for this all the way through. Segue. Ah. Um, a big thing when it comes to Sigma lenses is you actually have the ability to change the mouth. If we you do. look to actually go to a different system. Exactly. So um, we kind of see the principle that like, instead of trading in your old kit and then rebuying the kit again to literally with the same lens in a different mount, we offer a, a mount conversion service. So depends on the lens depending on the cost really um but it comes in at a it's cheaper than trading in and buying it yeah. then um but say if you bought this 23 mil and you were sony fitting last year and you said oh it's brilliant i want to keep this lens because it's got you know it's got a scratch where you know my son kicked a football in my face and i want to <laughs> remember that i don't know what it is but um it's a sentimental thing keeping it yeah. i find because it's got they do have their own characteristics over time um you can actually come to us and say, look, I'd love to buy, well, I'd love to have a new QGX mount on now, um, and we could do a mount conversion service for you. Um, and it only takes a couple of days to do. Uh, really? From our side. Yeah, That's actually crazy. You. As long as we don't have a lot of backlog in our service yeah. set, we could get it pretty quickly. Too. So it's not actually you taking the lens and then given a lens of the mount it's actually changing no, out the mount you can keep your lens uh, we just... with that with that gorgeous little scratch on it yes. on the... <laughs> from the book so yeah you just we just remove it and then we basically um do our full test on it to see if it's working correctly um and then send it back to you to, to, to go really oh, good so, as gold there's a lot of things um which a lot of people don't know about our service team is we're uk based we can get things fast and quickly and we pretty much stock every part so if anything did go on such a word i think it does um you have a three-year guarantee with every lens so in three years time if that came in or under three years if that came in we would repair it with any manufacturer fault um fault wise and we're, we're fairly good in terms of um like any scratches or that and as well oh, fair enough <laughs> yeah i think my sigma probably needs it to be fair. <laughs> yeah. i started looking at the other day but you're right you're right with when you say that certain lenses have a characteristic oh, a kind of story yeah. behind them yes yeah, yeah and like when you're saying you know about that i'm just like looking at the 35 there and i'm just like yeah that's that, that's been been through some stuff and i've also got another lens but I, i'll show you that after the podcast oh, it's not it, sigma yeah. as well to be <laughs> yeah. fair uh, but that lens has been through a lot. But um, you're right. I don't think it's 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 an important service to have. It also cuts down on e-waste to a certain extent. As exactly. Well. Yeah. Exactly. The more it the more you trade in, or even just chuck the lens thin, landfill or whatever it is, it's not good for the environment. So we try and keep you having the same lens and maintaining it as best yeah. as possible. Really. Excellent. Excellent. I think we've gone through most of what we were saying. Let me just check my notes. A lot of people just think of Sigma. They go, oh just do them so they surely and we've been around for about, about 62 years now which is a long time yeah um but in that time we've always been a camera manufacturer as well that's crazy segway hey there we go yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah um no but 100 percent. and yeah. like from the fpv fp ones from back in the day with the fovians and yeah so we had um they were dp uh DP, series yeah uh, so we had the sd and the dp series and even like before that we had some older generation yep. ones um but we we basically own um we we own a company called fovion which produces sensors and it's like a three-layer design it yeah more color than the majority of sensors on the market yeah which is impressive once you start to see the results you go wow oh, that's really neat in there um but we put them into some of our older generation cameras and now our gen generation camera we're on now is called the fp series which we have an fp and an fpl two cameras in the range they are the world's smallest and lightest full frame mirror systems i don't know they look pretty and so time yeah um, when you mount a big lens like this on it it's, it just shows how small the camera yeah. body is um it's just basically a box it's a modular system with full frame tensor behind it 
24 megapixel or 61 megapixel depending on what version you go for the l uh series will have the larger sensor so that will be the what, larger in terms of resolution so that will be the 61 megapixel on there but yeah. they're, they're just quirky little cameras they're quirky little That's cameras it. well like from two aspects i think they're interesting for like one they are small yes um but the other side is um when it comes to the cine cinema world slash uh video world um why i was wanting to talk to you about it today is because i actually watched a video from um i think a dslr shooter uh, or is this the one, one with the, the, very the small, small the, yes. the very small um sigma rig and it was just impressive now i'd like the idea of having a compact rig with you know having a v-mount option when it came to the battery and stuff mm -hmm. like that um yeah but the thing is with all the other cameras as well because they are they're built mostly for the photography market but with the fp series it's the first time so pushed into yes. videography so we can do raw recording on it now as well get raw onto an SSD. actually black magic raw as well yeah, isn't it is it? there so it uses the same sort of uh black magic pro say we say use davinci resolve with it as well probably to get the best result yeah uh but yeah it's the same sprint with black magic well like black magic raw is is an interesting thing to talk about because more and more companies are like investing in it because um well I think it's a bit of a cheeky thing that Blackmagic are doing in general because they're, they're actually doing something that Apple have done for a long time. And, you know, Apple, Perez, Raw, whatever, yeah, yeah. Um, they've always had this really mm. tight-knit control over it. Yeah. Um, and Blackmagic have always, and especially when it comes to the cameras, the software and everything like that, and more and more people are switching over to them. Yeah, and yeah. they realize that this Blackmagic Raw thing that they've been holding in their cameras for a little while is actually, really let's, let's release it. Really good, let's yeah. release it because um a lot of the other cameras are actually doing it as well yeah. so like fujifilm have embraced it sony haven't <laughs> um which I, th I think will change i think you know i think they're gonna embrace it i think canon have canon got it uh i don't think canon have i'm not, no, sure. I'm not i don't no. think so no. um um, it's a good thing because we do with the FP. You can excellently record it to an, an Atmos device, so you can get yeah. the res raw from it as well. Yeah, we've got B raw, and we also do uncompressed raw onto an SSD drive. Oh man! So you get like so many different options, and then you can also do MOV yeah. normal sort of files onto the SD yeah, if you want the lower res one. But I definitely think like the expansion of the B raw system, yeah, is fantastic for that. They've done incredibly yeah. well, and it's just it's it's something which you can then use multiple cameras on you will use our camera and you can mix it with a black magic camera and and it... but also that's the size of that camera yeah. especially when you compare it to the uh i think they still call it the pocket cinema camera yes, yes, which yes. it's not a pocket not cinema a camera, camera. <laughs> it's massive um you know I, I i'd like to test one out but they're, they're just i don't like the ergonomics of them i'd really like to test out a sigma of course, and then do. um also set it out in a cage but also for photo as well because yeah, we can something we definitely sort of that with one yeah 100 because something i noticed when um i did the review for the a6700 um is size is actually more important to me than i thought it was mm -hmm. that sounded better in my head no. uh <laughs> <laughs> but no um what's it called size is actually more important to me when I, than, than i thought it was because I tend to have my cage at my cameras like rigged out stuff like that and it's actually really nice to have a small camera in your in your arsenal to be able to take photos this is the beauty of the fp it is so tiny and small we even we don't have a grip on it and um, however we offer the option to add grips yeah. as well so we we do two different grips but like you mentioned with cages there are other cages like eight sins small rig so cast we make their own ones um, yeah. with bigger grips on them so kind of just a, the perfect little camera because for, for me i've got my little pinky falls off the end of it, so I just get the bigger grip. Um, you'll probably find the same with yours. Yeah. You'll, you'll probably need like a good grip as well to go on it. Otherwise, they do fall through your hand occasionally yeah. with smaller cameras. But the nice thing is with the video market is you can pop them anywhere. They're, they're tiny. You can put them for time lapse stuff yeah. and put them in a little box somewhere, leave them, and they're good to go. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, yeah, they're incredible. But we'll definitely sort you out with a, a demo. Hundred percent. Um, today's been really nice. I think we've pretty much covered anything. Unless you've got any final thoughts there. Oh, no. Oh, the YouTube channel you did want to ah, mention. Yes. Yeah, so we do have, um, at Sigma UK, we've now started our YouTube channel in the last couple of years, and we've started doing um, Britain's Best Landscapes. Oh. And um, thank you to my colleague, hey, Tim. He's going out and he's looking for the best landscapes. Um, we do some fantastic lenses all the landscape world, and he's just testing and playing, really, and trying to get some really good light. There's some twists on there as well. Um, but okay. I, you know, about 15 minutes watch, but I definitely worth it. I'll, give it, I'll, give, it, I'll give, it, give it a good guess. So after this, 
click on it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 put, I'll, put, I'll put I'll put a link up in 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 the somewhere. Yeah. 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 So, thank you. Um, but yeah, no, really nice, and it's nice uh, to have you come down on the podcast and talk. Um, and yeah, look forward to seeing you next time, man. One hundred percent. Nice seeing you. Thank you very much. So that was Sam Smith from Sigma. It was a lot of fun talking to him, as always. And I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And please like, follow and subscribe if you want to see more. If you have any ideas as to further guests you want on the show, then make sure you put it in down below. Have a good day.